Hey everybody, welcome back to the property and welcome back to another video. Hope you're all having a great day. Uh, I'm trying to be a little bit quiet today. Uh, my five month old son is taking a quick nap uh, in the stroller just outside of the building while my wife and two and a half year old daughter are exploring or hiking up the mountain as my daughter likes to say. Um, you know, that's one thing that we haven't really talked uh, at all about uh, on the channel yet in any of the videos is family. Um, like I said, my wife and I, we have a two and a half year old little girl and a five month old little boy. And during times like these, um, with everything going on in the quarantine and the stay at home orders, we're trying to get outside and spend as much time outside as possible, get as much fresh air as we can. And um, it's Saturday today and it's a beautiful day out. Uh, the sun just started coming out. It's probably about 60 degrees right now. Um, so it's the perfect time to come down here to the property. And we've been trying to do this um, at least once a week um, when the weather allows for it, but we're both still um, thankfully able to work um, during this. So when we do have time off, like I said, we, we try to come down here at least one day a week, um, provided that the weather is, is uh, at least decent. Um, just to get the kids some fresh air, let our daughter run around. Um, our son just enjoys watching her and, and whatever she's up to. Um, so not to get too sidetracked uh, from what today's video is about, but I just figured I'd make quick mention of that. And um, that being said, I hope everybody's staying healthy, staying well, staying home, maybe getting outside a little bit more than they, they typically would, um, enjoying nature, enjoying the outdoors, and enjoying the weather as it gets a little bit nicer. But today what we're working on is um, we're doing the service on my 1939 Alice Chalmers B. Not too much um, to do on this tractor as far as service goes. Um, grease everything, which I've actually already done. And then we've got to change the oil filter and replace the oil. The oil gets filled uh, right there on the top of the hood. That's a breather cap and also the refill. And then that white uh, piece right there is the filter. The only other thing really to do, I already checked the antifreeze, that's still good, is um, clean out. I don't know if you can see it, it might be a little bit dark, but the air filter here. Uh, the air filters on these older tractors are oil bath air filters. Um, so really there's there's nothing to, to clean. I'll pull that out and I'll just replace the uh, replace the oil, clean out the, the uh, lower canister and uh, empty the oil that's out of it and replace it but I'll show you that here kind of um, kind of as we get into thing so I pulled the tractor out of the building so that visibility would be a little bit better like I said right underneath here is the uh, oil drain plug so we go ahead and drain that out I just took off the uh, breather cap So hopefully it'll just take a minute or two to drain all this oil out. This tractor, um, when I bought it last year, um, had just recently been rebuilt. Um, so I want to I want to take a look over everything real good. The oil doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look like there's any um, any metal shavings or anything, at least nothing substantial that I can easily see. Um, once this drains out and I, I put the oil from this bucket into a, into a container that I'll dispose of it in, that'll give me a chance to look at it a little bit better, but it hasn't been run too much since the overhaul was done and the engine was rebuilt. So I figured I'd take a, the opportunity today to to service everything on it. This tractor is a little too small to use for um, most of the stuff that I do on the property. I can't really use it for anything uh, for haying. My dad has two Alice Chalmers Bs, uh, newer models, both early 50s, um, and I have used one of them before to rake hay, um, but with how, how the terrain is here on the property, not very much of it is flat. Um, and even just using a, a roller bar hay rake um, is kind of a lot for the tractor. Not so much pulling it in a straight line, but when you're trying to turn, especially when you're trying to turn uphill, um, it can be quite a bit for, uh, for these little tractors to pull. Size-wise, um, physical size-wise, this isn't too much smaller than the Alice Chalmers 5050. This is a gas tractor though, it's a four-cylinder. It only makes about 15 horsepower. And the biggest difference between this and the 5050, uh, besides power, 
is uh, is weight. This tractor is a lot, lot lighter um, than than the 5050. I don't know the exact specifications of either tractor, but if I had to guess, um, this is this is definitely less than than a quarter of the weight um, of that 5050. So. Um, this also doesn't have a power takeoff shaft on the back to power any of the implements, my baler or the, uh, the mower conditioner that need a power takeoff shaft. Um, it also doesn't have an electrical system on it. I'll show you at the end of the video, but this tractor, every time it started, has to be hand cranked. So weather like this and weather in the summertime, it's really not too bad to hand crank it. Um, but when it gets cold, it, it can take quite a while. This tractor doesn't have a choke on it either. So I'm going to let this keep dripping for a couple more minutes. Uh, and then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and put the plug back in, take the breather cap off the top, and uh, fill it up. So this tractor takes um, four quarts of just a 10W30 um, oil. If the engine hadn't been rebuilt recently, I'd want to be a little bit careful. Most of the oils that they make now have cleaners in them. They have detergents in them. Um, so when you put this oil in there and it runs through the whole entire system, it actually... It, does exactly what you would expect a detergent to do. It, it cleans everything. But if you use something like this on an older tractor that hasn't been rebuilt and might have some some you know crud inside of the engine, uh, you know it would sound like a good thing to have a, a detergent oil go through there and clean everything out. But if it breaks that stuff down too much um, and all at once, uh, you can actually start to have issues. Um, so like I said, since this one was rebuilt, um, you can pretty much get any uh, any. 10W30 that you want. Like I said, it, it takes four quarts. Um, this is a five quart jug here, so I'm going to go ahead and, and put four quarts in, and then the one quart that's left over, um, the uh, air filter, the oil bath air filter actually takes the same, you could just use the same type of oil. So um, once I clean that out, I'll put um, the little bit of of uh, what's left in here in the uh, air cleaner. It won't take everything, so I'll have just a small bit left over, but that's not a big deal. Like I said, this um, this isn't a threaded cap or anything. It, it's just an oil breather um, that just slides right down over there, and you can just tap it on with a with a rubber mallet um, just to make sure it's tight. But it, even if it's not super tight, it's not a big deal. It's not like it's going to bounce off or anything. And if it does, you're sitting on the seat right behind, so you'd, that's something you'd notice anyway. So um, I'm going to let this funnel drain out. We'll put the breather cap back on, and then we'll uh, change the oil in the air filter. So this is the air filter right here. And all I'm going to do is, is pop, there's, there's two of these clips. I'm just going to pop them off. And then kind of pull the, pull the base out uh, itself. So you can see the oil in there. Um, there's an oil fill line that's really hard to see on the inside of here. And that's, that's all we have to do. So I'm just going to dump this old oil right in the bucket. while I'm letting that drain that out. What these are supposed to do is really just it sends the, the uh, intake air down through here and any dust particles, dirt particles, anything like that are just supposed to be caught um, right here inside inside this filter. So now that it's, or inside the oil I mean, but now that it's mostly dripped out I'm just going to take an old rag and uh, wipe the base out. There is, um, there's always a little bit of crud on the bottom of these, um, some of that that sediment stuff that it's stuff that the oil has caught um, and didn't drain out when I just dumped it. So um, I'm going to get that old oil out and clean it up, and then we'll um, we'll just put a little bit of oil in here and put it back on. And then, like I said, um, besides the besides greasing any of the grease fittings, changing the oil and replacing uh, the engine oil. I should say, and replacing the oil and the air filter 
here. Um, that's really it for for service on this tractor. It's uh, you know being a 1939 model, it's it's really a pretty simple tractor. Let's get our oil here. Fill it up to the line. Like I said, it's just a matter of, of popping this back on, locking the two two clips in, and you're good to go. I'll do one more quick uh, walk around of the tractor, kind of show you some of the features of an older tractor like this. And uh, and we'll see if we can't get it started after sitting all winter. All right, everyone. Just uh, finished up the annual service. I I just realized um, I forgot to record replacing the oil filter, but very similar to the 5050. It's just a, a screw on, screw off. Um, so fairly simple um, to do that. It's just the uh, oil and filter, and then the air filter. Grease everything up. Um, really a, a pretty simple tractor like I mentioned before it is a 1939 uh, Alice Chalmers v B um, again really simple everything's mostly mechanical um, even down to the brakes it's just a, uh, a brake handle an individual brake handle on each side for each wheel uh, three-speed transmission uh, and reverse the throttle is right here this is the crank for when we go ahead and crank start the engine. Um, little kind of built in uh, tool area, tool box, so to speak. Good place to put a couple wrenches, ratchets. Um, this is a gas tractor, like I mentioned before, full, an inline four cylinder engine. Um, no electrical system, so it is a, uh, it is a crank start. I'm gonna go ahead and crank start it here uh, before we put it back in the building see how long that takes um, after having sat all winter. I do have one other tractor. Uh, I keep that tractor down at my parents' place. It belonged to, uh, to my mom's father, to my maternal grandfather. Uh, that's a 1947 uh, liter Model D. Um, that's a, about a 30, uh, 30 horsepower gas tractor. Um, very similar in size to this uh, Alice Chalmers B, um, a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier. Um, that I use a lot. It uh, has a plow on the front to plow snow, and then it's got a, a handful of attachments for the rear. I'll show you that tractor at a different time. Um, the reason I haven't shown that one yet or haven't had that one out recently is it does have a little knock in the engine, so um, I wanted to kind of tear into that and, and see what's wrong with it before I... Uh, before I ran it too much more. Um, I don't want to damage anything more than it, it might already be. So let me put the camera down and um, we'll see if we can go ahead and get this tractor started and uh, let it run for a few minutes. So like I mentioned before, this tractor was recently rebuilt. Um, everything is, is very tight in the motor. Um, a few things that I was always taught when, when hand starting these tractors is to never actually wrap your hand around the crank, um, but just to put it on one side. And normally with a tractor, you're able to still, with a, a broken tractor, you're able to still hold on to this crank um, and crank it until it starts without letting go. With this tractor being so tight, I've tried to do that a handful of times and it, it, um, it does kick back pretty hard um, if you try to hold on to it and, uh, and could you know potentially hurt your wrist or your arm. So you'll probably see me a few times when I go to crank it over just let go of everything completely uh, when I try to crank it hard and get it to start over. Um, this does not have a choke, this tractor. The three things that you have to make sure to do um, before crank starting a tractor like this is have it out of gear. There's a mark um, kind of almost ground in. It's in the metal um, on the throttle to where you set the throttle and then you just have to turn the gas on. Whenever I park this tractor, I turn the fuel off. Um, so just to confirm. All those three things are done, the tractor's out of gear, throttle's set, and the fuel is off. I'm going to go ahead and give it a few cranks here. 
and see if it'll start. Thanks for watching today. In a future video, we'll make sure to get this tractor out, put it to good use. Um, but for now, stay healthy, stay safe. We'll see you on the next one.